Hey friends, hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's gold nugget from God's Word. Today we're looking at the topic, does it lead you to be more like Jesus? We're in Colossians chapter 3, starting with verse number 1. Colossians 3, verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So as, as we're going through this today, we're going to see several things. And first thing we're going to see is the believer's new life and understanding what that is. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, that means you have been that you have been buried with Christ in the likeness of his death, but you've also been raised with Christ in the likeness of his glorious resurrection. And so God the Father sees us through his son Jesus Christ as, as if we are perfect and holy. And praise God for that, because we know that we still sin. We live in these earthly bodies and we still miss the mark. That's what the word sin means, is to miss the mark. We know we miss that, but because we have surrendered our life to Jesus Christ, even though in our spirit we are saved and we know that we're with Jesus, we're in Christ and God the Father sees us that way, but we still live in this corruptible body, this sinful body. And so actually from the moment you give your life to the Lord, that's when the real war takes place because now you're living in this body that's corruptible, but you're walking in this world that's corruptible and surrendering your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trying to live your life pleasing to him. And, um, and so as we go through this, I want to show you several things and, and hope, Hopefully you can gain some understanding of how you can have victory over the struggles that you have in your life. So first thing is to realize that very statement that you are now dead to sin. You're covered by Christ and his sacrifice and you will appear with the Lord in glory in heaven with Christ. And that's the joy that we have. This is one of the great passages of Scripture. It's a passage, a passage that believers often turn to when they're seeking a deeper and more committed walk with the Lord. Uh, it is the basis of a believer's new life. So let's understand that first thing is that you have been raised with Christ and you will return with Christ. Then look at verses 5 through 9. Therefore, because of that, Put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. Here's the, the battle. I told you that war that's going to take place the moment you give your life to the Lord. Well, here's that war. And the things that your flesh battle against are, first of all, sexual immorality, um, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, idolatry, all those things. Um, it says in verse 6, because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And once, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. Here's the question. Are you still walking in those things? Because if you're still walking in those things, but you have given your life to the Lord, then you need to surrender those things to the Lord and, and put on that garment of faithfulness and trust and live your life surrendered to him. I'm, I'm going to give you some other scriptures to sort of help you with that. But, uh, you know, in, in verses five through nine, we see some violent demands here. Uh, and the first one there is put to death all the sins that are listed here, the sexual immorality, the pure impurity, the lust, the evil desires, the greed, the idolatry. But then look what verse number 8 says. Now it says to put, put away or strip off all the following. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self with its practices. 
So these violent demands that are given us in Colossians 3 verses 5 through 9 to put to death all those sins in our life, not to let them have any stronghold on us at all, but then also to strip off all the sins that enslave our emotions and our tongue. Um, man, uh, your tongue can be such a powerful thing for good but it can also be very destructive. And if we don't get it under control, we're going to really struggle in our walk with the Lord because He will take us through some difficult days in our life to help strip us of that. Um, God is always teaching us and growing us and the way he does that is he takes you through some trials and tribulations to teach you and to grow you. You look at the story of Job in the Old Testament. He was a holy, righteous man, so much that God allowed Satan to, to test him. And what did Job do in, in the end after losing so much? Job did question God. He questioned him over and over and over, and the Lord finally spoke to him. And the Lord basically went through the creation of, of the earth and the world and said, hey, if I have this power, then who are you to, to complain? And in the end, Job saw his, his wrongdoing, and the Lord restored him. Um, so... Our goal as children of God is to put off these things in our life, not to allow the sinful things in the flesh to, to lead us, but we're to do what verse 10 and following says, and have put on the new self, meaning we're one body in Christ, and you are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator in Christ there is not Greek or Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, uh, Scythian, slave and free. Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The Lord is telling us here in Colossians 3, 10 through 14, the clothing that we're to have, that new life that, that should be within us, that we are to be holy and beloved. We're to be compassionate, to have mercy, to be kind, to have humility, meekness, gentleness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness. And above all, that garment of love, talking about that unconditional agape type of love that we're to have for all people and to demonstrate that in our walk. Think about how Christ demonstrated love to the people around him and how he, he didn't put conditions on anything. He loved people where they were and he changed their lives. And that's what you and I can do as well. So how do we win this war from the moment we're saved and we're, we're in Christ, buried with him and risen with him? How, how do we win that war of this corruptible body and the, the, the world that we live in? Several scriptures I want to give you, and I'll go through these and give you the scriptures so you can write those down. Um, but first of all, Look at Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Look at Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Second, Chronic, uh, Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5 says, 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of, of God, and bringing into captivity um, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wow, that would be amazing just to bring into captivity every thought and not letting that thought lead us to another thought and to another thought that's going to take us down this path of rationalizing, well, I can get away with it this time. Jesus loves me and he's going to forgive me. Yes, he does love you. Yes, he's going to forgive you. But you're commanded to take those thoughts into captivity. That's what's being encouraged to us here. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says, Put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, God places us in Christ position, positionally and we should live our lives in Christ in that way to, to live our lives perfect and pure and holy. And, and I know that you're thinking, well, I can't do that. That's But all things are possible with Christ. You're always going to make mistakes, but praise the Lord, you've been forgiven. We are to live our best. Put on the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Folks, if I could, if I could give you a remedy for how to win this battle in life against the sins of the flesh and... The, the the sins that we that we you know um, oh, what am I trying to say we we battle the sins of the flesh but we also battle this sin of our mind and we need to do what Scripture says take all those things into captivity but one way of doing that is outwardly changing some things in our lives. If social media is one of those triggers in your life that's bringing you down a path that's not pleasing to God, then get rid of it. Do you remember the days before Facebook? And now there's all these other ones, Twitter and, um, goodness, I can't even name them all. There's, I'm not on them. I mean, I have a Facebook page, but it's been in my mind to get rid of that because Often there's garbage that shows up on that, that Facebook page. And, and I'm like, where did that come from? Um, but there's so much that goes on in the world today that Satan uses to cause us to do what I'm getting ready to share. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It's that scripture where the apostle Paul says this corruptible, which the body we live in is corruptible. This corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. If we're going to put that on, he leaves us with a challenge in verse 58. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That means hold on to your faith. Secondly, he says to be immo immovable, which means to be firmly planted on the foundation of of Christ. And then he says, always abounding in the work of the Lord, meaning that you're continually growing in your knowledge and your understanding of Jesus and God and, and what that Bible that you have, what it means and what it says. But then the last sentence of that verse, the Apostle Paul says, knowing that labor is not in vain. In other words, he was saying, don't waste time. Time is a precious gift from God. Our time here on earth is short compared to eternity. But it's very important. 
because it's here on earth where you make that choice for Christ. It's here on earth where your, your fate is sealed for eternity. If Christ has spoken to you and you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then praise God, that means you're one of his children. And someday you'll be with him eternally, but right now you should be living with him. But if you've not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that means that eternity is going to be hell for you. And I'm talking about literal burning hell. If, if you have Christ, then let's make the most of the time we have here. Apostle Paul is saying, don't waste time. It's a gift from God. So use that time to live in front of others as pure and holy, as pleasing unto God. You're going to make mistakes, I promise. You are going to sin. I do. But when I sin, there's that conviction of the Holy Spirit that comes on me to seek His forgiveness. That's what the Lord wants for us. He wants us to walk through this life, a picture of Christ, so others may come to the Lord and, and we might be that instrument that God uses to bring people to himself. If we're going to do that, we got to put off the old man and leave it behind and put on the nature of Christ. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Father, for my brothers and brothers and sisters that are listening today. Pray, God, you would bless each and every one of them. Father, help us in this journey that we're in in life to walk pure and holy, Father. Realizing, Father, that there are going to be times when we're going to mess up. There's times when we are going to sin. We're going to give in to the flesh. We're going to give in to our emotions, Father. And Father, we just need to turn to you and ask for forgiveness and let you do a work in us. Help us to be as effective as possible as we go out into this world and live in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your day, and I hope you'll be in church on Sunday morning. Um, if you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to come to Benton's Crossroads Baptist Church. I'm the pastor here. Uh, we're located at 109 East Lawyers Road, Monroe, North Carolina, 28110. Um, please leave a comment and let me know if I can help you in any other way. Um, but God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.